Hi, my name is Eduardo Samaniego, and today I'm going to be presenting the book entitled Tough Fronts by Janelle Bales. The full title is Tough Fronts, The Impact of Street Culture on Schooling by Janelle Bales. Just to start off with a little bit about the author, as the author was preparing her doctoral dissertation, she was confronted with the real life situations in urban schools with students with tough postures. She came to realize that scholars often occupy positions of privilege within society. Therefore, she took the initiative to gain a new understanding of the issues based on her personal journey with minority students, not based on scholars' theories and claims. The story. The author, Janelle Dance, presents a critical study of the realities in urban schools faced by students from inner city neighborhoods. Her intent is to make her case as an insider based on her direct interaction for one year with urban students in the school environment, during which she focused on understanding the underlying factors and vulnerabilities contributing to street culture, postures of toughness, and the defiant street-like attitude in students' interactions with their teachers and society. Chapter 1. Dance reveals the sharp contrast between the depictions made by scholars of ethnic minorities in their social scientific studies and the real-life inner-city neighborhoods as she sees it. Dance is using a study to show the four labels given to ethnic minorities perceived as deficient or dysfunctional, contributors to the American culture mosaic, exploited victims, and agents of history-making choices limited by conditions within their lower social status. Throughout the chapter, Dance argues that the collective perception of ethnic minorities is based on scholars' extreme characterizations of deficiency and depiction of black Americans as inferior welfare recipients. She makes the following assessment. Unlike ethnic groups who immigrated to the United States by choice, the ancestors of African and Mexican Americans were dehumanized and forced into slavery, therefore Americanized by violent means. The rest of the chapter covers the various depictions of black and Mexican Americans. <clears throat> In chapters two and three, Dance raises the following question. Why do some urban students discern gangster-like poses? Dance explores postures, social gaps, and teachers' sensitivity in an effort to inspire school reforms. First, by discussing the issue of manhood, cool masculinity, in American males of African descent. Quote, being cool is to express pride, respect, bitterness, and anger, and distrust towards dominant society. The student cases illustrate that students are ordinary people who respond to their territory. In the case of urban minorities, the students are unaware that the impression they give on the streets must be adequate to secure their safe passage. The example of a student named Malik brings up the social gap issue between black American students and the teacher staff group, and teacher staff group where he states that teachers just do not understand the streets. Thirdly, the response of the teachers who cannot relate to the issues faced by the students based on their different cultural backgrounds is critical to this study. Dance further suggests that the film industry and news media continue to promote the urban gangsta as the prevailing stereotype of inner city youths. The rest of the chapter evaluates the sinister side of the streets, its impact on the students including drug deals, gang activities, prostitution, violent fights, and gun threats. In chapters four and five, Dance examines the social resources and caring teaching. The author highlights the contrast between minority students with different responses to their teachers, either hostile or positive. She contemplates factors such as capital, culture, and perceptions playing a role in the student-teacher school experience. Stories are presented of students from inner city neighborhoods having different experiences in the school system. It is suggested that access to social and cultural capital is instrumental to positive educational outcomes. Both play important roles in, su in successful relations between students and teachers. The author explores the solution 
of caring as an elixir of educational success rather than the sanctions to correct students' behavior. The students interviewed, like Gary, reveal there are some teachers that care. Most of them don't. Overall, students show very little hope of them encountering caring teachers. The students explain how their street experience have shaped their postures. In the context of cultural capital, the author also looks at the Student Family Foundation. She notices a shadow or absent mentor or father figure and the lack of a support system and weak values. Another student named Malcolm shows his lack of hope in graffiti art with his message, and I quote, violence is everywhere and everything. Violence cannot be stopped because violence always finds a way to survive. Violence is probably the oldest negative in the universe. <clears throat> Chapter six to the end. The rest of the book covers the importance of mentoring rituals and role models in school settings. Several students and families' testimonies are documented within these contexts. Chapter seven touches on the fear of the dark to explain how the race card affects people affects people's perceptions on all sides in various situations, as well as how the relationships in school settings and society are affected by the stereotype of, and I quote, the criminal black man. In conclusion, Dance uses American literature and essays to support her critical study and observations. Many quotes and citations are documented to highlight the multiple factors affecting the student's teacher's relationship the major gaps caused by race and stereotype, the social and cultural capital, the lack of support system, and the school policies. The author suggests that school policies can be used as great equalizers of inequality. By implementing reforms and introducing the concept of, and I quote, down teachers for street savvy students. To close the existing gaps between street savvy students and teachers in the school system. Target audience. Tough Fronts provides some valuable insights into urban education, student behavioral issues, and sociology. For graduate students and future teachers, this book raises important questions for future studies, which will lead to the betterment of education. The book offers a different perspective than the mainstream scholars' claims and statistics for all readers interested in a deeper study of the school system, successes, and failures relative to educating minorities, especially Black and Mexican Americans. I recommend this book to anyone teaching or aspiring to become a teacher. I'd like to end this presentation with several quotes that I found touching and inspiring. <clears throat> the mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, the great teacher inspires. And finally, Great teachers focus not on compliance, but on connections and relationships. Thank you so much for listening uh, to my book evaluation. And if you have any questions, please email me. Thank you.